My name is Tom Finger, and I'm delighted to have this opportunity to speak to you about U.S.-China relations and the international system. The relationship between the United States and China is at the center of most projections and worries about the international system. Decisions made in Washington and Beijing will have a major impact on the global system. But developments in that larger system will constrain and shape the options and actions of both the US and the PRC. Many countries see US-PRC rivalry as inevitable, and they welcome a degree of friction because it creates opportunities they can exploit. No country wants unmitigated hostility that would force it to choose sides in a bipolar world. Nor does any country want US-China relations to become too close because a G2 would constrain its own freedom of action. Third country actions will shape the options of Washington and Beijing as they attempt to reset the international relationship. No outcome is inevitable or immutable. Can the relationship be reset? Our relationship today is worse than it has been for a long time. Some insist further deterioration and greater hostility are inevitable. Others believe and hope that a reset and return to greater cooperation are possible. Both sides want a better relationship, so a reset is likely to happen. But the nature of that reset and what follows thereafter are difficult to predict because what happens will be determined by the interplay of decisions made by multiple actors in both countries. Neither country acting alone can fix fundamental problems. Trump has demonized China to distract from the pandemic and other US problems. Biden has rejected demonization, but affirmed the need to address long festering bilateral issues. But campaign rhetoric is a poor predictor of post-election foreign policy. If Trump is reelected, he would seek to reset the relationship. He is less anti-China than others uh, in his administration. But his approach would be very different than that of a Biden administration. Both would seek better relations, but neither would seek to restore the highly asymmetric relationship that developed under conditions that no longer exist. Both would seek changes in Chinese behavior affecting US interests. Both would demand greater reciprocity. Trump would act unilaterally. Biden would act multilaterally. Biden's approach would be better for the United States and the international system. We have decoupling or renewed engagement. Decoupling is an unhelpful concept, an undesirable goal, and an unlikely policy outcome. Globalization creates interdependencies, and the pandemic has underscored the perils of overconcentration and single point of failure vulnerabilities. Every player that can do so will seek to limit risk through diversification. The transition to less dependence on China will be accelerated and shaped by changes that have occurred in the global system in the years since the PRC gained unique access to the free world system at the height of the Cold War. Dozens of countries now seek to follow China's growth path by opening their markets in exchange for places in global production and supply chains. Companies and other international actors will respond to perceived opportunities in and beyond China. Economic and other calculations will be more important than political rhetoric about the decoupling from China. What Beijing does to address the legitimate concerns of private actor participants will be a more important determinant of what happens than will decisions made in Washington. Trump and Biden would adopt different approaches to what I will call engagement 2.0.
Biden would seek to reinvigorate and update traditional U.S. engagement policies designed to mitigate risk by reliance on a rules-based order that facilitates integration and interdependence. Trump, like China, would pursue greater economic nationalism. The approach adopted by the next U.S. administration will matter, but it will have less effect on the type and extent of engagement and or decoupling than will decisions made in Beijing. China has done more to limit U.S. and other foreign influence, oppor influence opportunities and engagement than has Washington. If Beijing continues to do so, a Trump or a Biden administration would move toward imposition of similar constraints. So what type of relationship should we anticipate? The US has long been central to Chinese foreign policy, but until very recently, China was sel has seldom played a similar role in US policymaking. Administrations from George H.W. Bush through Obama try but fail to develop a workable replacement for the grand strategy developed to counter the Soviet Union. Trump has attacked key elements of the Cold War strategy, even as he has attempted to substitute China for the Soviet Union as the central focus of American policy. Pieces of his back to the future approach make sense, but many others are inappropriate and unworkable. Few want a Cold War 2.0 strategy, but designing an overarching framework has proven to be difficult. Challenges include building consensus on the proper U.S. role in maintaining the rules-based order, adjusting burden sharing responsibilities in alliances and partnerships, modifying Cold War policies that granted greater access to U.S. markets and other resources than was demanded of allies and partners, and restructuring domestic policies developed in the Cold War context. China will be a central but not the only consideration as the next administration grapples with these challenges. Friction in U.S.-China relations will remain too important to ignore, but is unlikely to dominate policymaking in either country because both face daunting domestic challenges. The foreign policies of both will be formulated to facilitate achievement of domestic objectives. This reality will limit the rate and extent of disengagement, and it could contribute to a more positive relationship. 